Thank you, Peter. Beautiful. I was thinking we need to affirm divine order, wisdom, and understanding are now established in the United States of America. Divine order, wisdom, and understanding are now established in the United States of America. Let's say that together. Divine order, wisdom, and understanding are now established in the United States of America. We love our country. So that's easy to affirm, isn't it? Very good. Well, five-year-old Johnny <clears throat> told his dad he'd like to have a baby brother. And um, he'd do anything he could to help. And so... <laughs> His dad should have said, then stay out of our bed at night, you know, but no. His dad said, well, I'll tell you, Johnny, if you will pray every day for a baby brother for the next two months, I guarantee you that God will give you one. So Johnny went to bed early that night, and he started praying for his baby brother, and he prayed every night for an entire month. And when he told his little buddies at school what he was doing, they said, oh, you know, Johnny, you, that doesn't work. You can't pay... You cannot pray for a baby brother. It's never happened before. So Johnny quit praying. So another month went by and Johnny's mom went to the hospital. And when she came back, Johnny's dad called him into the room and there was a little bundle of a baby brother. And his dad pulled back the covers and there was a second baby. His mom had had twins. And so the dad said, now Johnny, aren't you glad that you prayed? And he said, yes, but aren't you glad I stopped? <laughs> cute, oh, pretty cute. Your prayers will be answered. So today I to, want to talk to you about the power of persistent prayer. To pray until something happens. How many of you have had that? I prayed and prayed. You have something that you've had prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed about. Sometimes for years. And you're still waiting for that fulfillment. Well, I want to talk to you about the prayer of persistence. And also give you three... Um, varieties of prayer that you can maybe mix in with how you do your prayer to just keep it fresh you know I, I tend to pray the same way all the time all the time all the time and then I get bored with it not bored with it but you know I, I kinda go unconscious to it it becomes habit rote and I'm not as awake when I'm praying and so to mix it up for me has been helpful in Luke Jesus tells the story of the friend who knocks on the neighbor's door at midnight and the family's already in bed and so the householder doesn't want to answer the door that means that his family your family of thoughts have quieted down and the man of the house doesn't want to disturb them by letting the intruder the intruding thought in that could mean any number of things that he wants to stay asleep that he wants to stay unconscious or that he feels like he's in charge of his thinking and thoughts and feelings and his process and he doesn't want to let an intruder in but the friend knocks at the door Jesus says with great persistence and he wants help and he's not going to stop until someone wakes up and someone awakens and so he's using that example to say the prayer of persistence you want to keep at it until you achieve a, a level of awareness when you make a decision to pray until you get results you have to have the attitude of the friend who's persisted in knocking he was assured that help was behind the closed door right and he knocked as long as it took for him to get results and you can apply the same strength of mind toward your desires that waking up the conscious mind by repetition by persistently affirming prayer until it's satisfied has been used effectively forever and we see it all throughout scripture Joshua had the children of Israel march around the walls of Jericho seven times praising God until the wall fell we see that Elijah prayed maintained a prayer vigil to end the drought and he sent his servant out to look for rainy clouds and storms seven times until he came back in and reported the storm was forming in the hundred and nineteenth psalm the psalmist praises God seven times every day Daniel we know prayed in the lion's den three times a day to keep safe you can never pray too much or too often 
If your desires are worth anything, are they not worth your attention? Your attention and your persistence. So remember, I want to remind us all that we are not praying to convince a reluctant God to give us something, but we're praying to align our mind with divine mind. To align our mind with truth. Now, Dorothy Pearson always used to tell us that we can pray up our lives, didn't she? You can pray up your life. And the illustration I like is like when I make um, deposits into my savings bank account. I'm making deposits so that I have money there in the future if and when I need it, right? And so when you're praying, what you are doing is building a strong, abundant, spiritual bank account that you can depend upon and draw on when you need it. A lot of times, your life is going great. And you think, well, I don't need to pray. But that's really the best time to pray. Because it's free and it's easy. And you can just build consciousness and build belief. So when you hit a speed bump in your life, you can immediately turn to that prayer consciousness and that belief that you've strengthened in you and, and built up. Well, we lead busy lives, don't we? We lead, and it can be difficult to carve out time to pray, even to, and especially to carve out time to be persistent in a prayer, you know, to be methodical about it. But today I want to share with you an overview of what the prayer of persistence looks like and then give you some variety prayers that maybe you can take home this week and incorporate into your prayer life so you, we can all do what Dorothy told us to do and stay prayed up, you know, stay prayed up. And this is really prayers for busy people. These are prayers for busy people. These aren't prayers that where we're going to go to a retreat and sit in the silence for seven days. I'm not ready for that. You know, three days maybe, seven days, no. There are as many ways to pray as there are people who pray, right? There's no wrong way to pray. And in my role as minister over the now... Uh, 17 years since I've been ordained, I have been asked to pray for everything. That you know, I've been asked to pray, um, do pet blessings, car blessings, home blessings, business meetings, prayers for to grow a business, to sell a business. I've been asked, is it okay to pray for money? Yes. Asked, what kinds of prayers should you pray to attract your perfect, true love? I've asked how to best pray for a family member or a loved one. I've been asked for prayers for guidance, for physical healing, for help with legal settlements, entangled divorce, child custody battles, whatever it is. I've asked if it's okay to use outer symbols like incense and prayer beads and chanting. And if so, what's the most effective way to use them? I've been asked for suggestions on how to make prayer your prayers, my prayers, more powerful. You get the point, right? There are as many ways to pray as there are people. And there's real no, no real wrong way to pray. But what I absolutely know to be true is that regardless of the method of prayer that you use, you must keep knocking. You must be like the neighbor in the story. And it's up to us to keep knocking until we have to be the ones who initiate conscious communication with God. God's ever present, always ready, eternal, listening right there. But, you know, we get distracted and we're not as uh, living, being, breathing, doing, becoming spirit as we could be, right? And it's because we have daily lives. We live in the, and I'm a spiritual being living in a spiritual universe governed by spiritual law, but I'm a human doing in the midst of all of that. And so how do we reconcile that? So I want to review the prayer of persistence. Easier thing I call it is pray until something happens and, um, and then give you some variety of prayers to stay prayed up. Step one in the prayer of persistence is that you are praying the same prayer. You are, you are creating neural pathways so you're praying the same prayer until you see results. So you want to set an intention of what you're praying, what you're going to pray about. And then, you know this from all the years of Phil's teaching, you want to choose a divine attribute that matches 
your prayer request or your prayer. So if you're praying for healing in a relationship, you want to match that up with divine love or divine harmony or divine understanding, right? You want to match your prayer request to a divine attribute. If you're praying for prosperity, you want to match that up with divine abundance or the uh, uh, divine generosity or giving and receiving. Something. If you're praying for physical healing, you want to allow divine life, divine health to flow in and through you. You want to pick the divine quality that fits your prayer, prayer desire. Then you want to choose a passage from sacred text. It can be an affirmation from daily word. It can be something from the, Baga, from the Gita. It can be something from scripture. But you want to use the same passage every day. And you want to commit it to memory. You know, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. You want it to get into the, you want to anchor it in the cellular level of your being. Those are living words that have come through the ages, that have been spoken in, by millions of people in millions of places, and they're, 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 they're anchored spiritually in our DNA. And so you want to pick a living word from a sacred text that resonates with you, you know. Um, the Spirit of God knows your needs and is even now fulfilling them according to the riches and glory of Christ Jesus. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. Whatever resonates for you, you want to pick a passage and commit it to memory and let the living aspect of that word integrate and infiltrate the very cellular level of your being. So, where, where are we? Same prayer, an attribute of the divine, and a sacred pass, a passage from a sacred text that you can commit to memory. You don't want to spend your words in prayer voicing your problems, your concerns, and your worries because what, as we're creating this field of prayer, Anything you're going to speak into it is enormously powerful to manifest. You are in the living word and your words are creating a vibration that's going out to form and shape and bring back to you an answer. It's helpful if you set a specific time each day and decide how many times a day you're going to pray. We are in the Lenten season. And there's now 41 days until Easter. Lent is 46, 40 days plus 6 Sundays. So it's 46 days. So we are 41 days away from Easter. Can you believe it? It's going to be beautiful. Um, so why not, you know, use this time. Pick a prayer and choose a divine attribute and agree to pray it every day at the same time for the next 41 days. Once a day. Maybe twice a day. You decide. You want to choose a place to pray. And this is, this is uh, praying at the same location does build that field of prayer, that collective prayer. Like as we've been meeting in here since when? When did we start meeting in here? November. You know, it's starting, you can, you know, you can feel when you come in now, it's starting to feel like this is our church home, doesn't it? I mean, we're creating this collective consciousness. So... You've had that experience when you walk into a church, and maybe it's not a church you've never been in before. True confessions, I love the cathedrals in Europe. And whenever I go anywhere in Europe, I make sure I spend a lot of time each day in the cathedrals that are there. Because they've been there since the 1300s and the 1400s, and, this, and, and they're saturated with a consciousness. And you walk in, and you can immediately feel it, you know? And so... You want to choose a place to pray where you can create that consciousness. It can be, you can have an established spot in your home. Some people make little small altars if they follow uh, more Buddhist practice. I have a prayer chair. It's a wing back chair. I've moved that chair from here to Kansas City and from Kansas City to Nashville and from Nashville back to here. And when I think of the last 25 years, the amount of time I've sat down in that chair... And it, because it's high-backed and it has the side things on it, I feel encircled in prayer. And I think about, you know, I prayed when I had pneumonia. I prayed when I had open-heart surgery. I prayed through my divorce. I prayed through ministerial school. I, all those prayers are in that upholstery. <laughs> and I'm not having it reupholstered ever. You know, it's really out of date and out of fashion and ugly. It's not ugly, but, it, you know, it's my prayer chair. 
My mom always got up at five in the morning and sat at the kitchen table and read her spiritual devotional reading and had her prayer time before any of the family was awake. And our kitchen table, she read at our kitchen table, and our kitchen table and that area was filled, was saturated with a consciousness of blessing and love and warm meals and good food and, and all of that. So you want to choose a place to pray and um, use it as often as possible so that you can, you're saturating and creating that field of prayer, but mostly you're saturating your own consciousness, right? And you take that with you wherever you go, and that's how you live and move and have your being in spirit. Then you want to choose a method of prayer, something that's comfortable for you, and that's where I want to give you today three ways that you can add some variety to your um, daily prayer life. So that you don't have to just go sit down in a chair and feel like, oh, I've got to go do this prayer time. I've got to work on my spiritual growth. Because we lead such busy lives, these are prayers that you can integrate into your daily activities. So one of the ways I love to um, pray is I do take my Kindle to the gym. And I open this up. And I put this on the treadmill or the elliptical. And I fire it up to a series of affirmations that I love. Sometimes it's just one if I'm working on one particular thing. But this is on the treadmill and I start out, you know, I am health and peace in life. I am health, peace in life. And the treadmill goes a little faster. I am health and peace in life. 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 Turn the page up. I am in divine order. I am in divine order. I am love. I am love. I am love. I am love. I can tell you that it transcends any human distraction. And I get into the zone. And I'm doing a workout. So I'm yes, I'm multitasking, but it's so focused that I transcend. I'm not thinking about my grocery list. I'm not thinking about the Sunday talk I have to write. I'm not thinking about the errands I have to run when I get done. I'm thinking I am health and peace in life. I am health and peace in life. I am health and peace in life. And, and it's something about Leo, Leroy White, one of the music, musicians who plays for the youth in unity, calls it sweat your prayers. Sweat your prayers. Where it moves into the physical aspect, the cellular level of your being, and it transcends any, other, any distracted thought. You know, you are in the moment and the, even the workout goes away because you're moving in the, you're in the flow of spirit and it's amazing. So don't think you don't have time to pray because you can work it into your workout. You can, I plug my earbuds into my phone and I tuck my phone in my waist and I listen to affirmations while I go for my walk. I try to walk 10,000 steps a day, which is almost five miles. And so that's a lot of time when I can be incorporating living words into the cellular level of my body if I'm praying about something. So um, let that happen. And if I wear the earbuds or I play music while I'm reading the affirmations on the treadmill, it magnifies the experience. If it's spiritual, what for me is inspirational or spiritual music. So... You can work out and get your prayer time, advance your prayer time. Just put one more prayer practice into your day. Second thing is if you want to sit still. If, you're not, if you don't want to sweat your prayers and you want to sit still, remember to light incense because that shifts everything. Um, in ancient times, incense was used in religious ceremonies and rituals as a symbol of approaching God. They believed that the white smoke that comes up off the incense, carried your prayer into the realm of spirit. Isn't that a beautiful idea? Carried your prayer into the realm of spirit, that that was a way of approaching God. Now, when you use incense, you can put a little ritual with it into your daily routine. So you want to wash your hands before you handle the incense as a symbol of releasing any negativity as you're going to be going into your prayer time. And then when you light the match that lights the incense, you want to engage the light of spirit. And then the fragrance was thought to, in ancient times, was believed to call God's attention, to get his attention that, oh, there's a prayer over here. Um, but mostly for us, it stimulates an emotional response. And it, you know, depending on which kind you use. 
And so the smoke carries your prayer into the realm of spirit. I love that idea. And the fragrance stimulates you emotionally. King David even had a prayer. I call upon you, O Lord, to come quickly to me, to give, to give ear to my voice, and let my prayer be counted as incense before you. Isn't that amazing? Then when you're finished, to complete the ritual, you... Um, say when you you make your prayer request and then you say it is done and when you get up and toss the ashes you say amen so there's a full circle of wash your hands light the incense let the smoke carry it up speak your prayer amen get up toss the ashes so and it you know just mixing it up so that it's the, it's the man knocking on the door persistently to stay awake, stay awake to what you're doing, stay focused to, what, to how you're praying. Third way, final way <clears throat> to add variety of prayer is a prayer practice that helps cleanse out emotional, mental, physical obstacles out of our life. In 2 Kings uh, chapter 5, verse 10, Elisha told Naaman to go wash in the river Jordan seven times. And he was told that his flesh would be clean. And he didn't believe it, and he went, and he did it reluctantly, and his body was healed. And we're told that not only was his flesh, his flesh was restored like the flesh of a young boy. There was a total purification and healing. Water has long been used as a healing method. And again, this is a way we can incorporate prayer, more prayer, into our daily experience. Water, we've always known instinctively that water is important for our survival, right? The earth is 80% water. Our bodies are almost 70% water. It's important for bodily cleansing and just water has great meaning and value for us. Elisha told Naaman to wash in the Jordan um, Jesus healed the man born blind, put mud on his eyes, and told him to wash in the pool of Siloam. We can't overlook the fact that Jesus insisted that John baptize him, and, and um, John the Baptist used water as spiritual baptism. So water represents cleansing and purifying. And most of us will admit, raise your hand now, <clears throat> if a warm bath or a shower at the end of the day doesn't feel renewing and great. All right. Yes. Yes. So, whether we're bathing, listening to the ocean waves, take a cool drink of water on a really hot summer day, it doesn't matter if we're immersed in the water, if we wash in the water, if we have some sprinkled over us in baptism, if we're listening to it, if we're drinking it, water supports our well-being naturally. Naturally. So why not integrate it into your life? And this is one of my favorite prayer rituals too. Um, and I do it in the morning more so. Well, I do it. I really like to do it if I have to take a shower in the afternoon for some reason. But an extra shower. But water can be part of our daily prayer routine. And in this ritual, they recommend that you come to the ritual already bathed, already clean. But this is prayer for busy people. So I'm going to let you skip that part. And just make it part, you know, just make it part of your um, shower or bath routine. Um, so here's how this goes. You get your water ready, whether it's bath water or turn the shower on. And if you use bath crystals or herbs or bath products, that's fine if they nourish your body. But you're not supposed to use anything that has any artificially perfumed soaps, gels, or anything that has any toxicity. And then you want to stand in front, I'm, I'm imagining my shower in Nashville, I had this, I, I own Trace Atkins' house, you know the country western singer, I bought it when he sold it, and he's six seven or something, and he had the house custom built, so everything in the house was for someone six seven, and I'm five one, and so the shower was ginormous, and I love to get in that shower because it was made for a, a Kings basketball player, you know, and um, so I, I imagine, and this was my ritual with that shower. I haven't done it so much since I've been here. And I need, this lesson has helped me remember that I need to go back to this. But turn on the shower water and let the steam kind of start to come. And then you stand in front of the shower and you recite out loud your sacred text three times. Be still and know that I am God. 
Be still and know that I am God. Or whatever your text is, be still and know that I am God. And then you step into the shower and you let the water soothe you. This is where you could do the pre-cleanse. You know, the, like the cycles in the washing machine. You can do the pre-rinse. But then you want to begin to deliberately start applying water to your body with, so either have a container or cup your hands and make sure you pour the water over every area of your body. Now even though the shower water is coming on you or in the bath, you're scooping it up with a container and you're pouring it on you as you are repeating your sacred text. The main thing is to just keep your mind focused on words of living truth words of living truth. So you let that gently apply the water. There's no scrubbing. This is just a, a, a pouring over, a natural element of the earth pouring over your body. And then um, you let the water run over you again seven times. Like um, Naaman had to dunk in the Jordan seven times. All the, the number seven is representative of physical completion or physical healing. So once you've poured the water over parts of you seven times, then you want to speak your prayer request out loud. So you've run the water, stood in front, said your sacred thing three times, stepped in, cleansed, seven anointings with the water, and then speak your prayer request three times. Let that finish. Step out. Pat yourself dry. Remember, no rubbing, no scrubbing. You're going to pat yourself dry, which is an honoring of your body. This is a really good one if you need physical healing to use this process of I am life and I am health in the shower. Then you're not supposed to think about your prayer request for 24 hours or until you're back in the water again to repeat the ritual. If you have to think about something, you only think about your sacred text, right? Because now you've cleansed, you've released any blocks or any obstacles, and you're ready to go. They recommend that this is best to do right before you go to bed because then your body and your mind are relaxed and you've made your prayer request so that as you go to sleep your subconscious mind will work on your prayer request. You know, it goes out in all the universe. Be nice if you do this one and then light some incense to let the white smoke carry your prayer request up into the universe. That'd be great. So, pray until something happens. Keep your devotion to the point where you feel a shift. Now what do I mean by that? A shift is when you've prayed enough to know that all of a sudden whatever the issue is you have a sense of peace that passes all human understanding. You come to that place of absolute certainty and assurance. You, don't, you may not know how things will work out but that belongs to omniscience. And you may not know what power can accomplish your prayer, but that belongs to omnipotence. Your part is to stay in alignment with those words of truth, with that sacred text. And you feel that shift, and it's just like all the tumblers click into place. And you know, and you know that you know your prayer I want to say has been answered, but that your prayer is released and it's doing its thing. And it's going to bring your answer back to you. Lastly, you want to stay open to all possibilities. When you're on this prayer of persistence, the real truth is, is that prayer changes us, not God, right? Prayer changes us. And so when you're making a prayer of persistence, you want to stay open to the idea that, one, your prayer could be answered immediately. Two, you could get a sense that the tumblers have clicked into place and that your answer is very near. But three, as you're praying the prayer of persistence, what I've found in my life is that God sometimes illumines me to a different path or a different way or a different desire or what I'm praying for somehow morphs into something different than what I originally thought. Sometimes if it's not a real prayer and I don't give it any attention, it dissolves away. But if it's one of those ones that you've been praying for years, you know, it's going to stay with you until, it, until it's fulfilled, until it's answered. So you may have a sense that your answer is very near. 
You may discover that your desire changes or morphs, or you may find that the Spirit of God in that mo in those moments, the Spirit reveals there's something even greater for you. Because when you have a desire in your heart, it's the Spirit of God saying, okay, this is what I have ready for you, and I'm trying to push this out into your life through you, so get out of the way, take your sacred shower, your spiritual bath, get out of the way and let me push this into your life, let me bring this goodness into the world through you. Right? <clears throat> I love it when singers, athletes, whatever, get in the zone or singers do what Sharon and I were talking about earlier. They make a transformance rather than a performance. Their, their, their music is so perfect that the entire room is transformed. It, and, and, and when they're in that space, this is God trying to deliver great music to the world through the instrument of this person, as Peter said in his meditation. Make me an instrument, so let me have this desire, and let me pray for its fulfillment, and then let me say yes and affirm it, and then bring it through me to the world. You know, we're expressing more of God in the world all the time. Your intention is something... Your intention is that something will happen as a result of your persistent prayer. And you can be assured that indeed something will happen if you practice one of these or integrate one of these into your life. Something will happen and it will be good and very good. Right? So I want to invite you this week to try using one of those. Body prayers, those are not for the faint of heart. You know, you have to, and even if you take a written sheet of affirmations on your treadmill or your elliptical or whatever, that's just great. I have a whole list of prayer declarations that I use sometimes. Or use incense and see that your prayer is being carried into the ethereal realm on, in that white smoke. Or try the spiritual bath. Either, any one of them, I think will, knock, 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 will wake us up. Wake us up and help us persist in living prayer rather than just speaking prayer. Prayers for busy people, okay? I want to let's close for a moment. I want to bless give you a blessing. So I'm inviting you to give one of these a try. And with each prayer you pray, may you experience the presence of God as your most holy self. May you feel the grace and the beauty of being fully alive in the sacred chasm of unlimited possibilities. May there be an anointing of spirit upon you as grace and love. May you feel the beauty of being fully alive in the sacred realm of all potentiality. You are creating in the realm of all potential when you pray. May you fully trust the omniscient mind, the omnipotent power, and may every prayer find gratitude on your lips, love in your heart, and celebration in your soul. Thank you, God, for your love for us, for your love for each one here. And so it is. Amen.